Entering Season 3, I've put in about two and a half days of playtime into Warzone's Battle Royale in particular. I'm a big Battle Royale fan, and I've really been enjoying Warzone. I've taken my breaks, my string of days off, but in that two days of time, I'd like to think that I'm pretty efficient when it comes to playing and also winning, being the last player standing as the goal in any Battle Royale. But through around 180 games, I'm sitting at over 54 wins in that span of time. And with Season 3 coming up, some additions probably on the horizon here and more people jumping in with the launch of the next content up. Update. I wanted to share with you guys 50 of my best tips that have helped me big time in securing a, about a one in three win rate. So hopefully this can help you out in being the best in the lobby and maybe even stringing them together to consistently be as best the players you possibly can be. But that said, let me know your thoughts down below. How many wins in Warzone do you have? And as well, since we are so close to season three's launch, I'd imagine we have a big reveal tomorrow. And of course the update goes live tomorrow night. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare and Warzone content as we round into the new chapter of the game. But anyways, we got a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Firstly, let's talk about some stuff before you jump into the actual game, stuff that you really want to make sure that you have nailed down. Firstly, it comes down to the mode you want to play. Season 3 looks to, from the game files, promise duos and quads, but for the time being, we have trios and solos. I definitely would recommend trios if you have a party that you can run with, because solos, from my experience, is just a relative camp fest. It's not the most ideal of game modes, and of course, the communication with having teammates affords you a much better understanding of the game going on around you, since two to three more sets of eyes and ears are always better to look at and listen for things compared to just one set of those. Additionally, communication is incredibly key. To me, it's the make or break component of each game. If a player can accurately call out where an enemy is shooting them from, or even ping them for that matter, rather than just say over there, I'd be willing to put the money on the player that communicates it a little bit further. So having that communication is absolutely key and you want to make sure that you're having call outs for your teammates bouncing off as much feedback as possible to each other so that you're as aware as you possibly can be of your surroundings as for stuff that you need to take inventory on that you can control before you jump into a game let's start out with loadouts firstly build your right loadout or loadouts first know how you want to approach the game and match that at hand if you want to play super aggressive maybe take an smg class with maybe a launcher of some sorts if you want to play something for a longer distance maybe take a sniping class with a rifle secondary fast Faster firing weapons are incredibly powerful in this mode, it shreds through enemies' armor, and while it may not have the highest DPS, you'll likely be able to shred through that armor faster than, say, the fire rate of maybe the Odin. Heartbeat sensors are another integral piece of equipment that you want to run on your loadouts as well. This will alert you if there's a player in your proximity, pending they don't have any counters to it, which we'll talk about in just a second. Rockets are incredibly OP, like an RPG. I'm not going to say you're my favorite type of person if you run this as a part of the meta, because it's incredibly annoying to go up against, but it's incredibly incredibly overpowered and thus I don't blame you for running it. Thermals are still incredibly useful and potentially even overpowered allowing you to scout out players that don't have cold blooded from across the map even with no seeming distance drop off for that render so you can scout out with relative ease and get a lay of the land. Monolithic suppressors on everything is a must have not just the standard suppressor, it adds damage range and also keeps you off that radar. Fully loaded allows you to get your full ammo count and is incredibly useful whenever you jump back into a game and land on a loadout crate. Maybe that be saying from the gulag or being redeployed. C4 is a lethal is incredibly important and powerful and we'll talk about why in just a little bit here. The ghost is an absolute necessity. It's incredibly powerful and we'll come back to why, but again, so is overkill also. Run both of these on two different classes and we'll explain as to why you should in just a second. And also, finally now rounding outside of loadouts but now the last thing that you can control before jumping into game is how you end up formatting your minimap run the square minimap here on this because it offers more visibility i think it's about 20 to 25 percent increase in an area you gain as opposed to the circular one and orientation that's really your own preference but i prefer to have it follow my positioning with rotation enabled but let's talk about in game firstly drop in hot with action right off the rip or do it secluded but make up your mind before you jump into it know that where you're going to have as a drop path will determine the areas of if you want to drop hot or if you want to drop secluded. That's a you decision. Personally, I prefer to drop hot and a lot of the times to get first kills and loot after. It keeps you warm, but also gets you some good loot maybe if you take it off somebody who may have had good stuff. A huge tip that I can give you guys right off the bat is run and farm bounties. It gives you cash and gives you the locations of enemies. And the more that you complete, the more the bonus cash yield is. Early game, this is incredible. Not only does it tell you if there's a player that landed right by you or maybe pushing you, but it also 
also allows you to, if you can secure those kills, get an extra cash yield outside of it, helping you get your stuff set up early on. If you find stopping power rounds, run them. Don't think twice about it. Whether this be early game or late game, oftentimes I'll find them early game, so that's why I mentioned it early on, usually in chests, but utilize those. But do be aware that if you pop them into, say, a base weapon or a weapon that you swap out in a loadout drop or something, once you pick it back up, those shots won't be loaded in anymore, so it'll essentially waste it. But if you are playing in a party, have players search different buildings early on in an area so they can get cash and money fast and efficiently. Don't go all towards the same exact spots, but stay close enough that you can back up your team if needed. Utilize that ping feature early on and as often as possible all throughout the game while either searching or scouting. This will easily showcase visibly where your targets are to the entire team. Pull your cash together so that you can get a loadout drop as soon as possible. Keep an active eye on the amount of cash you have, and once you see that tally over 8,500, meet up at the closest buy station and get your gear as soon as you can, and the quicker, the better. The more likely that if you get it quicker, you'll catch players off guard and with lesser quality loadouts for a gunfight, so you should be able to win those. Be aware then of when loadout drops come in naturally on top of when you may buy one. At the end of wave one and at the end of wave five, your loadout drops will end up dropping in from the sky. Knowing this can help you set yourself up for rotations of classes, which are pretty important as well. And what I mean by that is the next tip of swap your loadouts midway through the game, or at least pick up that secondary loadout crate if you have the opportunity to. Get your loadout drop early, get overkilled weapons is the way that I think of it, get that first overkill loadout drop, but then when you see another one, pick out a loadout with ghost on it and as well cold blooded. It will drop your two weapons for whatever is on that class, but you'll just be able to simply pick them back up and also then have ghost as well as cold blooded so you essentially run two tier perks of having overkill plus ghost. So it's incredibly advantageous. After that, one thing to look out for, whether it be on the ground or buying are UAVs. These are perhaps the most important asset that I think you can get within Warzone. Information is power in Battle Royale. The only downside is that ghost is a counter, which we did say we'd come back to. That's what makes that so important. It's a hard counter to the UAV as well as the advanced UAV, which is kind of wild. You don't even show up on the advanced UAV. So that is something that may sway your decision in running it on your loadouts. It's even a counter to hard heartbeat sensor again, which is why it's so important. But speaking about the heartbeat sensor, use that thing as much as possible while scouting and especially early game. If you can find one on the ground or in a chest early game, that's actually one of the most advantageous pieces of equipment early game. Most players won't have a loadout drop within the first, say, three to five minutes. So you can rack up kills early game and as well late game, it helps give you the information on where players may actually be and thus helps you prep for gunfights or maybe take the first step in engagements to keep you alive longer. After that, make sure that you're farming money the entire time through bounties scavengers recon contracts pick your poison but get as much money as possible because it's incredibly important and can be something that helps you out greatly and the reason is because if you have money you want to buy buy and buy I think one of the times I was most confident since Warzone came out was a game that I was playing where my squad just ran simply just a gauntlet of bounty contracts. We'd grab a bounty contract, kill said bounty, get cash, pick up another bounty contract, kill that new bounty, get cash. You see where that's kind of going, but it ended up getting us to the point where we were fully stocked to the point where we all had at one point over 10,000 in cash each. We had self-revive and UAVs, so we were literally just sitting on stacks of money. So what we'd do is we'd end up trying to track down players, we'd go to a buy station, pop a UAV, buy another one immediately, and then go to wherever the players were close by so that we could kill them, get their cash, or maybe even find cash on the way, maybe complete another bounty. And it was just incredibly advantageous. Super fast pace, kept us in the action, and we ended up going on to win that one with ease. Having that money allows us to burn and then replenish those UAVs, which we said is one of the most important things to have. Armor plates are always something you want to have on hand as well. Warzone is very much a game of armor. You die unbelievably quick without that extra time to kill, so it's crucial in gunfights. The margin of error late game especially is so much larger if you don't have armor. You have to land over double the shots in some instances on players that would have armor if you don't, meaning that you'll have to utilize positioning, cover, and a bit of stealth so they don't get their shots off first and land them on you, thus ending your game and maybe that heartbreaker second place finish. But also, gas masks are a relatively cheap thing to buy, but overall are very useful piece of equipment, saving you the possibility of getting absolutely nailed by the zone. Buybacks are again the last thing that you really want to utilize if you have cash because it's incredibly useful for equalizing a fight. Maybe you ended up losing a squad mate but you have another team pushing you after you just defended against the onslaught of a different team that killed your teammate. Instead of potentially going up 2v3 you can buy your squad mate back and then get him in and equalize the numbers. Fully loaded comes in handy here perfectly because if you land on a 
a loadout drop, you can end up getting that with full ammo on those weapons. Playing rotations is also a huge tip here for this. You can watch for stragglers maybe coming out of zone or running at the edge of zone, so they have to push to you. But running that perimeter instead of going head first into the very center of the circle, you cut down on the amount of locations that you can be shot from. And minimizing that amount is key because it allows you to safely engage with specific fights and focus fire where needed. Additionally, when you are taking fights, make sure you have finished kills if you have the opportunity to. Yes, it might seem a little scummy, but self-revive is a hell of a pain if they end up getting back up. As well, revives at a distance often even the odds and allow players to know where you're at if you don't finish them. So make sure that you do. If you though cannot finish the player, reviving players actually makes an audible noise. So if you shoot somebody and they go down and they wrap around a corner, you'll know if they end up getting picked up or not. That should give you a heads up to know if you're going into a 2v1 or another situation like that. Although, to be fair, a lot of audio also isn't trustworthy. The audible noise that reviving players makes though has been a constant thing that has worked for me the entire way through Warzone, but things like your ladder audio doesn't often play. Footstep audio often is bugged as well, where you won't be able to hear a player running right up next to you in the middle of a field, but you can hear somebody that's 16 floors above you in a staircase sounding like they're right next to you. So just be conscious of that. But while we have the topic of high ground here, utilize that when at all possible. It's not everything in the game, but it's incredibly helpful to have high ground. This will allow you to dictate the fight on your terms because there's often no cover vertically between rooftop and floor, whereas horizontal there would be if everybody's on the same level. Plus, this allows you to, if downed, be able to revive a player or revive yourself with cover, knowing that the player down below does not have the opportunity to immediately finish you or push up to you. It gives you some time to regain your footing. After that, note that vehicles are a pretty powerful tool. You can run down people, and especially right now, their vehicle hitboxes are incredibly inconsistent, incredibly broken, so they're a little overpowered right now, but also note that on the opposite side of that coin, vehicles are also a crutch. They can get you killed and your entire team killed just as easily as you can kill with them. Two C4s to a truck will blow that up. One C4 will blow up a helicopter, rover, ATV, and SUV, and same thing goes for rockets. That's just a triple kill or higher depending on the full number of modes that we have at the time of you watching this. That's a multi-kill just waiting to happen. So, be conscious of that. If you or your team do get wiped, that is unfortunate, but while you have the gulag, there actually may be some fortunate piece to that when it comes down to it. Sometimes you'll end up spawning in the same gulag, meaning that one player will go before the other, and that teammate spectating the fight can give calls to where the enemy player may be, thus giving you a slight leg up in that gunfight and hopefully allowing you to redeploy. Once you do redeploy, though, you may have a tall task ahead of you. If you don't have any loot, you may be best off waiting and floating in the air until the end of that first or fifth wave like we talked about, where you can drop on your loadout drop. Unless you have fully loaded, it won't give you much ammo, but you'll have your perks again and your weapons of choice, giving you that much an edge to get back into the action on the terms that you want. Also, if you don't make it out of the gulag though, or are finished off once again, make sure that you scout for your teammates while alive. Open your TAC map and watch for gunfire. When you see it, ping it on the minimap and they'll have a general understanding or rough location of where they need to be aware of. This can go for basically anything. Also, ping locations when the UAV is active as well. Have a player scout on the TAC map while others are looking around, and if possible, mark hard items like a contractor or vehicle in or around that area because the general standard markings only allow for one time per use, but the item markers, those are a bit more static and don't have a one use limit. Now, outside of the gameplay stuff and just some general tips that I've picked up on as well, this is where we'll round out the video here with it. Firstly, use some warm up exercises. I like to play a game or two against bots to get a nuke and warm up the aim. It will keep going until I get that 30 kill streak. It's just a nice way, I think, without any negative effects on your stats to warm up the reaction, your ability to spot players, and of course, gun skill a little bit. Early in game, though, if you are looting loot crates, the weapon cards that will pop up on the weapons that come out of said crate, underneath the rarity, there's a number of dots out of five filled up. That's the amount of attachments that that weapon will have. Buildings like police stations have ammo caches that will allow you to refill your ammo. Headshots aren't exactly the most crucial thing because they don't negate armor entirely, but they do help tremendously in the case of doing the required damage for knocking a player. The armor kind of just compounds onto about a total of 250s worth of HP, so being able to do those headshots with the extra multipliers shreds through armor a little bit faster. Heartbeat sensors also are incredibly advantageous, not only just on foot approaching areas, but also in things like helicopters. There doesn't seem 
seem to be a height limit so you can fly by and scout out areas to know where players are. Additionally, be conscious of your zone. It could be coming up much faster than you realize. If you end up seeing a flare in the sky, make sure you know the difference between them. Red is a buyback, yellow is a recon, so just know there may be a team there or maybe a team coming back. If you're firing with an auto weapon at a distance, try to tap or burst fire it instead of holding down the trigger. This will help with your accuracy. And if you are scouting out players and you see them on the minimap, there'll be an icon above or below the dots, just like an MP to indicate if they're above you or below you. But if there's not one, they're on the same level. Hard pinging an enemy with your ping system will mark them in red and showcases their real time movement for about two to three seconds after that ping. So even if they round a corner, you'll know if they keep running or if they just duck into cover. Things like the precision airstrike and cluster strike still have the possibility of killing you while you're inside. It's likely a bug, but just be conscious of that. And finally, the last thing we'll talk about for number 50 is there's currently an EBR variant, the line breaker that actually has the one shot headshot kill potential, which it's not supposed to have and will likely be patched very soon, but can be advantageous as of right now. But anyways, that's 50 tips here that have helped me incredibly whenever sticking to my gameplay and trying to win. Again, I'm pretty happy with my stat line. Am I the best? No, but I like to think that I can hold my own and can definitely bring something to the table. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything in particular you guys really enjoyed here out of this? Any tip that you guys would like to throw into the mix? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things modern warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered here on the channel. So if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button, especially with season three rolling around. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get kind of outside of YouTube. Brack live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.